Hey everybody, Friday update, March Madness continues today. Happy St. Paddy's Day as well. Gonna be a lot of uh, drunken debauchery here out in Las Vegas. I'm gonna try and avoid all that. And staying focused on these games. 14 hour day yesterday and up at 3.30 this morning, ready to go. And we have another four pack for you at Docs and back to back six unit plays, three and one yesterday. And a six unit K, Sean Auburn on the money line. No brainer. Nonetheless, uh, as as advertised, we're gonna we're gonna give you. I'm gonna talk about some games I had leans on that we didn't put out, and then uh, we'll give you the late game between Montana State and the Wildcats of Kansas State. We'll talk about that game, both side and total. Yesterday, you know, we we told you there's gonna be some head scratchers and there's gonna be some upsets, and man, Virginia once again. Kicking myself for not taking Furman. A lot of guys, I was over at Santa Fe Station at the sports book yesterday. I avoided downtown in the strip and went out to a local's casino, which has got a really nice sports book. Stations runs it. And uh, never really crowded. Good food joints in there. Cheap drink prices, you know. So went in there. But boy, a lot of guys had the money line on Furman. They were going nuts in that one. But Virginia, last four appearances. Three first-round exits. Wow. And Arizona. What in the world was that? Man. Man. 11-point lead with nine minutes left and score six the rest of the game. And you beat UCLA? I was wondering about UCLA last night after that game. But they blew them out. But hmm. and then you had you had a bad beat one way or the other on the San Diego State game with half the second left, and they call a foul. Oh, I I had the under in that game, so I was fine uh, with that one. And of course, um, you know Duke came out yesterday as we expected. They're playing as good as anybody in this tournament right now. Your free pick yesterday. They're playing as good as anybody in the free anybody in the tournament. It's a dangerous team right now. They're playing Tennessee on Saturday. Oh, Rick Barnes is in a big game. Coaching Tennessee without his best player. Hmm. Houston. Sasser probably going to be out. Maybe another player. Couldn't happen at a worse time. That's too bad. Hmm. Man. Tough matchup, too. Saying so, some surprises yesterday, and some head scratchers, and some easy money winners as well. You know, you know some of these, you know, uh, big, big beat out here in Vegas. Everybody in the casino that I was at was on West Virginia. Now, I didn't get near that game because the whole world was on West Virginia. How about that? Maryland isn't that good, FYI. Now, today, let's talk about some games we passed on but took a strong look at. I'm just having this conversation with you guys, just having a cup of coffee, gearing up for March Madness on a Friday, St. Paddy's Day, amateur hour for people who think they're Irish. Uh, but at the end of the day here, you, the, the biggest one, I really kind of wanted to put a lean on USC. I don't know about Michigan State. That's just a coin flip game. You see Santa Barbara's a big popular underdog out here in Vegas against Baylor. Just FYI. That's one there. Marquette first half line is one I looked at. A lot of people got Creighton in the Sweet 16, taking on NC State, who's super talented, but you don't know what you're going to get. Boy, the way they looked against Clemson in that ACC tournament, you know. And this will be probably Rick Pitino's last game as Iona's head coach. You're probably going to see him at St. John's or elsewhere. Um, getting almost 10 against UConn. See what Iona does there. You get a lay 23 and a half with Purdue. Hmm. One we kind of passed on that I liked. Remember last year, St. Peter's knocked off Kentucky. 
I think Calipari gets them up. I'm not sold on Providence. I'm not sold on Kentucky either, but might want to lean there. That Drake-Miami game um, is a toss-up. Uh, Drake's got four seniors on that team, and DeVries is the best player on the floor in that game. We'll see what Miami's got. That's one of those games you just want to sit back and watch. The game that really interests me here, and the other two dogs, I think Arizona State will give TCU all they want. I think Kent State will give uh, Indiana all they want. Kent State's got the best player on the floor in that game. No, no, it's not the guy from Indiana. It's from Kent State. They get hot. Look out. But the Kansas State-Montana State game here reminds me a lot, you know. I knew there was, you know, one good team in the Mountain West. And that would be San Diego State because of their defense. And we had them under yesterday, of course, um, in that game against Charles, uh, Charleston College. And Montana falls into that category of one of these real small conference schools that's, that really did well this year. In Kansas State, at 23-9 and record going through the Big 12, that's impressive. Kansas State's got some players. And they're well coached uh, in this game. And one thing you look at, the smaller conference schools got in there, you know, Montana State is 10-5 and away from home on the road this year. And K-State only 4-7. and But K-State's also a good, both these are good cover teams. 19-12-1 against the spread for Montana State. Kansas State 20-12. Uh, Kansas State laying seven and a half here uh, against a team I think that's overmatched, uh, especially athleticism wise. Over and under is 138 and a half right now. I like the over. I like the over. Montana State, you know, um, they had to play Northern Arizona, who Cinderella their way uh, through the uh, Big Sky Conference, knocked off a bunch of teams including Eastern Washington, which is impressive because Eastern Washington we had Tuesday night. They beat Washington State straight up in the NIT on the road. But they had 85 against them. They allowed 78, though, against Northern Arizona, like an 8 or 9 seed in that tournament. Um, they put up 84 against Northern Colorado. Eastern Washington, they put up 79. Uh, 91 against Presbyterian, you know, 72 against Montana. These guys can score, you know. Uh, Kansas State, though, outside of the game against TCU, which they just stunk, they allowed 80 against TCU. They allowed 89 against West Virginia. When they scored 81, they scored 85 against Oklahoma, 73 against Oklahoma State, 75 against Baylor. You know, I mean, this is a team that can put up points if they want to. You take a look at the last five averages here, you know, and the consensus is on the under here. Um, but you take a look at the last five games and they can't be ignored. On defense, these guys are allowing 146 a game. On offense, 156 a game. And you got to, and so, okay, they're playing this, that, and the other. You always got to remember the shooting percentages, and we talked about them. Uh, we talk about them all the time. Last uh, the last five games, these two both are shooting forty seven percent from the floor. And Montana State can shoot the three. They're at thirty nine percent against the three. Their last uh, uh, shooting the three, and then it comes down to crunch time, putting points on the board when the clock is stopped. Montana State from the free throw line their last five games is 80% and Kansas State 75. So you got a high probability of putting points on the board of the clock not running. I'm taking the over 138.5, K-State, Montana State. Late game tonight. Be sure in Greensboro. So be sure and uh, take a look at that. Get over to Docs. We've got a uh, four-pack with a six-unit top play today. Come on. Ready to go with some NBA action, some NBA prop action as well. Well, PGA on Saturday and Sunday. We'll have NASCAR, Fast Track to Profits, Atlanta, Super Speedway on Sunday. Ready to go for that one as well. Best of luck on March Madness Friday and happy St. Patty's Day.